Hey guys, so today's topic is adding H-alpha to galaxies so that you can get nicely defined H-alpha and H-beta regions just like in this image that I recently took of M101 and that's also the image I'm going to be using to show you how to do it today so the requirements before you can do that is that you have completely flat images as in no gradients, no light pollution everything removed um, and your images should be aligned obviously and try to do this with good data don't don't do it with 30 minutes of H alpha this is likely not going to work or not going to be a lot of fun when you do it with bad data so um, the reason why we can't just do H alpha plus RGB is it's it's actually pretty simple the the problem with things like galaxies and stars is that they emit a lot of light in, in a broad spectrum and this basically makes the H alpha signal drown and since we have pretty wide narrowband filters like even 3 nanometers is still wide compared to what, what would actually be needed to, to isolate the signal for example when you look at sun at solar filters they're a lot more narrow Anyway, um, so what we need to do is we need to subtract the red signal from the H alpha signal and then we can add the H alpha signal back into the RGB image. So the first step is to um, split the channels using the split RGB channels command here. And we don't need the blue or green channel, at least not right now. So we're just going to use the red one. And one more thing, the images are both linear and they should stay linear throughout the, the entire process. Um, but yeah, this is awfully stretched. Jesus, let's try this. Um, and the first thing we need to do is to, well, like I said, to subtract it. And for that, there is a pretty cool formula there is a, an additional formula to calculating a variable, but honestly, in my experience, you don't need that. All you need to do is do some trial and error. So first of all, I'm gonna rename this to R. Okay, what we want to do is we want to take the alpha, so the H alpha minus Q, and Q is going to be something that we'll define later on, and then multiply that by, let's just do this, by the red channel, and then subtract the median value of the red channel. We do that so that we avoid clipping anything and the median is basically our our failsafe, let's just call it that. And the Q value, I'll get to that in a second. So before we apply this pixel math instant, we want to use a preview. I'm just going to put it on the H alpha channel. Um, and the reason we're going to use a preview is pretty easy or simple it's just this is going to be trial and error and the Q value basically is the amplifier that um, that that decides how much signal is going to be removed and um, in my case I'm just going to start with 0 0.1 oops 0 0.1 and see what that gets me so when we apply this oh Oh, I did something wrong. Yeah, I just realized. Sorry, that has to be multiplied, not added. All right, that's much better. So <clears throat> when we use Control Shift and Z to switch the before and after views, you can see that there was a lot of signal subtracted already, but I wouldn't say it's quite enough just yet. So let's increase this to 0.2. Still looking pretty good. Let's try 0.3, that's probably too much. Yeah, when the galaxy starts to get black like that, you're actually clipping data, and that's something you always want to avoid. Avoid. So let's try 0.25. That's still a bit too dark. And my cat's crying. 0.22, That looks good. All right, so this is the signal subtracted and that's basically all we want. So I'm going to apply this to the entire image and then close pixel math for now. 
Um, there is one more thing when zooming in, we see that even though this is seven hours of F2 data, it's still noisy. So I'm going to create a second preview. And now we're just going to do some noise reduction. I'm just going to use TGV denoise and uh, yeah, I'll just skip forward. Okay, so that's done. Can remove the mask right here. And now this is our subtracted H alpha image. And um, I'm gonna close that for now. So we don't need the red channel anymore either this point um, this is about adding the signal back in and um, for that we're once again actually I can leave that open <laughs> once again going to use uh, pixel math I'm just gonna make this a lot smaller okay so the first thing we have to do is I'm going to extract the luminance using the extract CIE L component button right here. Um, so again, that is stretched way too strong. Right. Uh, we don't need that for now, but we have the luminance, and then I'm going to extract the RGB, and we can close that. So we're going to start with the red channel. And, um, okay, so once again, pixel math, and this time we want to use um, everything, so we want red, green, and blue. Okay, so we have the RGB image, and we have the H alpha image right here. So what we're going to do is extract the luminance using the extract CIEL component and we don't need that for now and then once again we're going to create a preview and for the sake of the tutorial because this is an RGB image and this lacks saturation big time so I'm going to quickly apply some saturation to this Going to use the image as a mask. Um, like that. And then use the saturation curve with a preview. Alright, that should do it. Nope, you want to apply it to the actual image. Okay, so. You can already see some of the nice details, but we can definitely enhance these. These. So, open up Pixel Math, and this time we want to use all three channels. We want to use the red, green, and blue channel. And first of all, the the first thing we want to add is the image that we're going to apply this to, which is which you can do by using the dollar sign T, and then. To, um, to that we want to add a boost factor which is called B and that's going to be defined later on and then we want to multiply that with the H alpha image so and in order to avoid clipping once again we are going to not only use the H alpha but also the median of it so H alpha minus the median of alpha that's the red channel so this is going to, what this is going to do is, it's going to take the image right here, the red channel, and then it's going to be adding B plus the H alpha subtracted the, the median of the H alpha. The green channel, and um, the reason why we don't just use the 
the single expression is because we want to add to multiple channels. And the reasoning behind that is that when there is hydrogen, there is also there is not only hydrogen alpha, but usually also hydrogen beta. And I, I don't have a H beta filter. I don't even know uh, think there is a high speed filter for that. But um, we can basically simulate that because hydrogen beta sits in the blue spectrum and hydrogen alpha sits in the red spectrum. And so the green spectrum is completely unaffected. O3, for example, uh, oxygen would sit there, but um, I don't have any oxygen. So I'm simply going to leave the image as it is. Dollar sign T. And then for the blue channel, we're going to do something similar. So once again, plus T. But this time, we are going to... Um, one second. Plus B, obviously. But then, instead of simply adding the H alpha, we are going to add a, a value. And this is the amount of H alpha that is going to be basically subtracted from it. So instead of using the times 1, we are going to use times point two and from what i gathered online the amount of h beta in comparison to h alpha is roughly one fifth so this should emulate that and uh yeah then same thing h alpha minus median of alpha and i forgot a bracket here so now all we have to do is define b um usually you can do something from two to four uh, above that, if we took, let's say, 10, that would probably be too much, and 1 would be not enough. So I'm just going to start with 2 and um, apply this. So as you can see, if I switch the before and after, everything is unaffected except of the H-alpha regions. And that's the, the cool part of it. So the entire dust lanes here, if we didn't have, if, if we hadn't done this continuum subtraction, everything in these dust lanes would have been blue pinkish now or purple. And that's not what we want. We want to maintain the true colors here. Um, but yeah, let's raise this to three. Much stronger now. And let's just go all crazy and set it to five. This is way too much, I guess. Yeah. So at this point, it's just starting to overshadow the rest of the galaxy, and that's not what we want either. So I'm going to set it to 3.5. And I think this is this should be a, a healthy and acceptable number. Now, there is just one more thing, and that is I'm going to zoom in into these regions. And that is this number right here. How much is going to be put into the blue channel? And um, so, for example, when I raise this to 0.5, it becomes more purple. If I set it to 0 0.01, so basically non-existent, it becomes very red. And uh, this is personal preference, honestly. In my case, um, I like it to be pinkish. So I think this is a good number, maybe point. One five. Yeah, I think I like this. And um, yeah, let's apply this. And that should do the trick. So when we use Control Z and Y, you can clearly see um, how much this impacted the image. So that's it guys, that was my first PixInsight tutorial. I know this was a very specific tutorial and not in a broader sense, but I think that's what I'm going to focus on for now because I still don't feel super comfortable in making, I don't know, beginner-oriented PixInsight tutorials um, that cover the basics because it's just such a vast program. 
Um, but yeah, anyways, I've been having some awesome growth on my YouTube channel, which I really appreciate. So if you could subscribe, comment, and like, that means a lot to me. Um, anyway, I got a couple of more videos planned, both processing and some more cinematic stuff. Now that I finally got the camera fixed, I hope you're not as, uh, noticing the, the increased quality right now. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more, and as always, clear skies.